My God, I thought this would be a little video, but that is definitely not the case, as you can see. What happened is, is that over the past couple of days, a number of you have been tweeting me saying, Grace, who's in charge over there exactly? There's a lot of misinformation. Well, I, don't, I wouldn't call it misinformation. There's a lot of legit confusion as to who's calling the shots, not just at AT&T and Warner Brothers, but really what you want to know is who's calling the shots when it comes to DC content, and even more specifically, the Snyderverse. So I thought I'd make a video, but it turns out that AT&T and Warner Brothers leadership and HBO Max leadership is even more of a ball of string than I had anticipated. So let's untangle it. Uh, but I have to say, after I did untangle all of it, my first thought was, what a mess. This is ridiculous. They've been doing a lot of streamlining lately, but I think they have more to go. And then also there is, it's revealed, as you'll see, a very clear reason as to why, and it's, it's structural, as to why DC just can't seem to catch up to Marvel. They don't have a chance with the way AT&T and Warner Brothers is organized. So yes, AT&T and Warner Brothers, the deal that doesn't get as much ink as the Disney Fox acquisition, but it's had a far bigger impact on fandom, DC fandom to be specific. Starting with the mad frenzy for the film division to look appealing to AT&T, their new overlords, which was, a, which, which, which was part of the reason, ego being the other reason, but part of the reason that there was so much meddling in the DCEU in the first place. The AT&T Warner Brothers deal is largely responsible for creating the Snyder Cut movement. Yet fascinatingly, they, you know, it was created, uh, you know, the Snyderverse was thrown under the bus to appeal to AT&T. Yet fascinatingly, when AT&T finally came fully online, once the deal was approved, they sided with the fans. But then, more drama. When HBO Max launched, it turned out that siding with the fans wasn't successful. And so HBO Max recently underwent a major restructuring to hand power back to Warner Brothers proper rather than having an independent over at AT&T. I know, I know. So again, and that's really unfair because, you know, I don't think that the Snyderverse fandom has had a chance really to, to step up to prove their, prove their value and, you know, how much firepower uh, or dollar power, I guess, was better, a better answer that they have because, you know, we're still waiting for the first content from that to come in. So again, with fans paying more attention than usual to who makes the decisions over at AT&T and Warner Brothers, and with very clear divisions amongst those suits, who they support, the fans are traditional Hollywood. I, I'll tell you, bottom line, fa suits support doing a good job and making sure that their resume looks good and they stay in their position. So that's, I think that's a, a big part of it. Uh, but anyway, uh, although I don't know if that's totally fair, but you know, I think when the chips are down, you know, survival becomes key. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm gonna give you an update as to who does what. All right, so let's start at the very top, and that's John Stanky, who runs all of AT&T. He used to also run Warner Media too, but he recently gave up that position. So Stanky just runs the parent company of Warner Media. That puts him on the level of, say, Brian L. Roberts, who runs Comcast, and you might be like NBC. I mean, who, who runs Comcast and owns NBC Universal, and you might be like, who the heck is Brian L. Roberts? Well, that just goes to show you how little he interferes in NBC Universal business. So, Stanky, you can expect the same level of um, of meddling. He obviously wants Warner Media to do well, Warner Media and all its divisions, but he's put key people in place to make sure that happens. He has to run. AT&T, his main focus in life is making AT sure AT&T is successful. Now, of course, they're also now an entertainment company thanks to the Warner Media acquisition, but they also are primarily a technology and telecommunica telecommunications company. The whole reason they acquired Warner Media was to help propel those businesses, to offer content. And, you know, they want to get into the digital space with like HBO Max, obviously, because an AT&T, of course, is already in the digital space. And even more so, John Stanky is based out of Texas. He's not even in, forget Los Angeles, he ain't even in the state. Now, of course, he can Zoom and call anytime he wants, but you know, he's not on the ground. So yes, AT&T in 2016 moved to acquire Time Warner, that's what it was called at the time, and the deal was finally made official two years later in 2018, and AT&T quickly rebranded it Warner Media. I guess that's better than Time Warner. 
I still, I never want to lose the Warner Brothers. I like the Warner Brothers name. But anyway, Jason Keelar, as so many of you know, and so many of you follow that poor man on Twitter, and you'll see, it's basically useless. But anyway, especially because he's done stuff that's not been in your best interests anyway. All right, so anyway, he's, he, I'm sure he's a very nice man, but his, his, his mission statement is not to make you happy, it's to make Warner Media a successful company. But anyway, Warner Media has several divisions, which Jason Keelar is responsible for. Warner Media Studios and Networks, Warner Media News and Sports, which includes CNN, Warner Media Commercial, which includes things like Otter Media, Warner Media Direct, which is HBO Max. That's basically what Warner Media Direct does, HBO Max. Put a pin in this, we're gonna discuss it more momentarily. And then Warner Media International, which oversees Warner Brothers and Warner Media's international endeavors. Uh, that's a huge company. This company is gigantic. So obviously, Keelar is not involved in the day-to-day -day decisions about a franchise that's part of one of his divisions. So let's move down to Warner Brothers Studios and Networks, which is run by the new CEO there as well. A lot of new, not, not a new people, a lot of new faces over at Warner Brothers and AT&T, etc. But this, of course, is Ann Sarnoff. She oversees Warner Brothers Film, Warner Brothers Television, Warner Brothers Animation, Warner Brothers Interactive, which is the video game division, DC Comics, cable channels. Uh, she actually does not oversee DC Comics directly, as you're going to find out. Mm, this craziness. Cable channels, 50% of the CW, Fandango, publishing, music, merch, theater, theme parks, etc. So she's very busy as well. So then there's Toby Emmerich, who runs Warner Brothers Pictures. Now, Emmerich, whose brother is actor Noah Emmerich, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, he started out in Hollywood as a movie producer and a screenwriter before becoming the head of New Line Pictures. And he did so well there, particularly with horror, that he recently, well, first he was moved up to be one of three people who were running Warner Brothers film. And then just in 2018, he became the single person running Warner Brothers film. Now, the, first, the last single person to run Warner Brothers films was Jeff Robinov. What a swell guy. I, I interviewed him on the red carpet for the great Gatsby. He's the person who really instilled this sense of loyalty at Warner Brothers. Once you came to Warner Brothers, that was your home. For better or worse sometimes, but Jeff Robinov was a great guy. But he quit in 2013 when he didn't get the job of the head of all of Warner Brothers and Sarnoff's current job. We'll talk about that more in a second. But Robinov, I want to point out to you, during his run, that included the Nolan Batman films, and he is the one who made Warner Brothers a home to Zack Snyder after Dawn of the Dead. And he and Nolan together put Zack Snyder uh, on his DC path, starting with Man of Steel, one of the last films that Jeff Robinov oversaw. So who got the gig instead of Jeff Robinov? Why it was Mr. Mr. Kevin Sujihara. We all know how that turned out. But he was one of the first digital executives that was promoted instead of traditional executives as the dawn of digital you know, started to rise over Hollywood. And before, um, you know, before Kevin Sujihara, it was Barry Meyer who retired. Oh, how boring. He just did a good job and decided to retire. <laughs> all right, so anyway. So when Robinov left, because he didn't get Kevin Sujihara's job, Kevin Sujihara replaced Robinov with three people. Greg Silverman, the head of Warner Brothers Production. Sue Kroll, who would head up marketing. She was the one who got so upset when the Suicide Squad trailer leaked online and tried to take it down and uh, realized that was a futile effort. But you know, Sue Kroll, to her, to her credit, is actually pretty talented. Uh, Hollywood executive. She produced, for instance, A Star is Born, uh, and she now is an independent producer. She's a little like Amy Pascal. She was a studio suit. It ended up not going so well for her, but now she's a successful film producer. Uh, and Toby Emmerich was running New Line. So those are the three people who, were, who took over for Robinov. And then in 2018, Sujihara promoted Emmerich to being the sole person in charge of Warner Brothers film. And then when DC film founders, John Berg and Jeff Johns, they're the ones who decided to create a DC film division, when they were fired after the devastating failure of Justice League, which, you know, they had been egged on by suits who were worried about the film being successful and wanting to look good in the face of uh, AT&T. And also, of course, they were meeting a deadline to get their bonuses. But still, John Berg and Jeff Johns, they came up with the idea of creating Justice League. They spearheaded it. And, you know, of course, the buck stopped with them and they were fired. So when they needed someone else to run, so when it was needed for someone else to run DC Films, Emmerich put in his horror guy, Walter Hamada, to take over, you know, who'd worked so extensively with James Wan. And I think Aquaman turned out pretty darn good. 
Now, I've heard from my sources that Emmerich does not care for the Snyder fandom, to put it lightly, and that was even before recent uh, uh, developments. I think, you know, it's probably, I can say, easily the worst chapter in his career, and I think he probably is frustrated he cannot escape it. I don't know why he doesn't just turn around and embrace it and become a friend and a hero to the Snyder fandom. Like, it's, he's, don't make, never make it personal, man. Never make it personal. All right, now, uh, although it's becoming quite personal with some of the most, again, recent developments. Uh, all right, so we'll see how that progresses. Now, as for HBO Max, it's got a whole freaking column here because it's a mess. So HBO Max, one of the first things that Jason Keelar did when he was hired was restructure its creative leadership. Now, remember, HBO Max is the key product of Warner Media Direct under Jason Keelar. But Keelar was like, man, this is not working out. And it's not working out. It's still not doing particularly well. Although make those Roku, like Amazon Fire, I mean the uh, Fire Stick deals. But anyway, NBC superstar Bob Greenblatt, who had been hired away to run the creative at HBO Max, he's the executive who was quoted uh, as talking about the large expenses of the Snyder Cut. He's the guy who said, I wish it was just 30 million. Well, after a little over a year, Keelar fired him. That was one of the first things Jason Keelar did because of the disappointing launch of HBO Max. So I think that's understandable. So instead, Keelar structured HBO Max so that the business side is still under his leadership. Uh, HBO Max general manager Andy Forsell reports directly to uh, Jason Keelar. But all creative decisions now are under Ann Sarnoff's watch at a new division at Warner Brothers Studios and Networks. So basically, Jason Keeler said, I like running the business side of this. I don't want to be responsible for the creative. I already have a giant creative division up and running. Why don't they just provide content for me? That makes sense. Uh, HBO's Casey Bloys will now handle HBO Max programming as well as HBO programming, and he reports directly to Ann Sarnoff. Now, that all happened in early August, but just a few weeks ago, Warner Brothers, no executive took ownership of this shakeup, but it was decided that HBO Max's film division is also being phased out. And now Toby Emmerich is in charge of HBO Max film and is supposed to coordinate with Casey Bloys for the overall creative uh, direction of HBO Max. So now Emmerich and his team will decide if their movies go either to theatrical release or HBO Max, uh, which, you know, again, makes sense. You know, Disney's doing a similar restructure, has done a similar restructuring with Disney Plus. So Courtney Valenti of Warner uh, oversees uh, for Emmerich. He has Courtney Valenti overseeing Warner Brothers proper. Richard Bremner is now in, court, in charge of New Line. And of course, Walter Hamada is in charge of DC Films. I have no idea who runs DC Television, by the way. It seems it's unofficially Greg Berlanti, although he has nothing to do with upcoming DCEU HBO Max spinoffs, you know, the Batman and Peacemaker. Those are being run out of the production companies that make the respective films. Matt Reeves' production company, and then Peter Safran, who's the producer of a couple of DC films. He produced, I believe, Aquaman, Shazam, and the upcoming uh, Suicide Squad. And he has a history with James Gunn, which is why he brought him over. Relationships run deep in Hollywood. They run deep. So, you know, remember that if you want to work in Tinseltown. It very much is who you know. So as for Ron, who, who runs DC Entertainment, that's Jim Lee and newly hired Daniel Cherry, who, as was predicted, came from the video game sector. Activision, uh, not Warner Brothers, but from Activision Blizzard. He was an outside hire. He hasn't made any big moves yet. But anyway, they report to Pam Lifford. Who the heck is that? Well, Pam runs Warner Brothers Global Brands and Experience Division. That's ridiculous. Here's your problem. DC should be run by a Hollywood executive, not a comics executive or a video game executive, but a Hollywood executive who has the relationships he needs, he or she needs, to, and, and that person should report directly to Ann Sarnoff. You know, it should be its own division within Warner Brothers proper. Kevin Feige reports directly to Alan Horn over at Disney. Remember Bob, well, Bob Chapek now runs all of Disney, and then the film division is run by Alan Horn. So Feige, by the way, runs everything at Marvel except for the comic book division and give him time. But as you can see right now, DC is scattered across all the divisions. It's not its own division, it's a brand. So Jim Lee, for instance, and I'm sure Daniel Cherry, they're not making decisions. I mean, Jim Lee is certainly consulted, but that's, you know, just, you know, he's like a museum curator. You're like, hey, check this Jim Lee. Did I do it a good job? And they're like, hey, he's like, yeah, the fans will be happy with it. And then it moves on. I really think that DC has no control over where it's where its characters are used and how they're used and and every i mean it's really not good and i think that's why dc in the large 
set. And, and, and also, no one's career is directly tied to DC. I guess Walter Hamada's is, but he's the only person here who is. Greg Berlanti has other projects, so if DC goes belly up, he doesn't care. I mean, Walter Hamada is the only person in charge of DC films. But as for everyone else, you know, they have other jobs. No one's, whole, no one's in the business of DC. And that's a problem. I, guess, I mean, again, I guess you could say Jim Lee is, but as you can see, he has no power. So what do you think? Share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.